video, we're going to take a quick look at um, a process known as completing the square and using that to help us solve quadratic equations that we couldn't solve using square roots. Now, in the previous video, we learned how to solve uh, an equation like this using square roots. Since the only variable I see is under the square, there aren't any other variables anywhere else, I know I can solve this with a square root. I would get rid of that 3 first. I'd have x plus 2 squared by itself on the left, uh, 25 on the right. I want to undo that square, so before I do anything to that x plus 2, so I'm going to take the square root of the whole left side, and that's going to give me x plus 2, and the square root of the right side will be plus or minus 5, because two numbers you can square to get 25, positive 5 and negative 5. Anytime you undo a square, got to use that plus minus. Now I'm ready to subtract 2 from each side, so I have x is equal to, well, positive 5 minus 2 is 3, and negative 5 minus 2 is negative 7. So these are the two solutions, and let's check them real quick. So we have 3 plus 2 quantity squared plus 3 is 28, it works, and negative 7 plus 2 quantity squared plus 3 is also equal to 28, so they both work. Now we're going to take a look at how we can take an equation that has um, an x to the first power and turn it into an equation like this. So let's take a look at um, one last review. So this type of equation, x squared plus 6x plus 9, that can't be solved using a square root because I don't have just the variable squared, I have this other variable there. That indicates that I can't just use a simple square root. Now we've learned to solve these equations in the past and we solve these by factoring. And this one in particular is a special type of polynomial. Let's see, these first two would multiply to x squared. Second two would multiply to 9 but add to 6. So it'd have to be 3 and 3. This happens to be a perfect square trinomial, so I can rewrite it as a square. Then I can take the square root of each side, get x plus 3 is equal to 0. That's the only time you don't need plus minus. Subtract 3 from each side, and I, we would get our solution that way. So the idea behind completing the square is if we have a problem where it's not going to be factored this way, we can make it be factored that way. So let me give you an example of um, what completing the square is all about. Let's say I had this expression, x squared plus 10x plus something. Now I want this to be able to factor as a perfect square. So the way that this works is that whatever your b term is, actually make, ter make sure you have nothing in front of x squared first, which we don't here. Um, take whatever that b term is, divide it by 2, and square that, and now that is a perfect square trinomial. So this is going to factor down to x plus 5 squared, because um, we, when we take 5 times 5, we get 25. When we take 5 plus 5, we get 10, so it factors down. Take a couple quick examples looking at some uh, completing the square. So I want to take um, this polynomial, I want to make it a perfect square. Well, first thing you have to check for, make sure you have nothing in front of that x squared. I don't. I'm going to bring that down, divide it by 2, and square it. And now that is a perfect square. So this is going to factor to x plus 6 squared. Whatever you got when you divided that b term by 2, that's what you have in your binomial. Take a look at another one. We got n squared plus um, 14n plus something. What will make this a perfect square? Take that b term, divide it by 2, get 7. Square that, you get 49. Now it's a perfect square trinomial. It's going to factor it to n plus 7 squared. Now let's take a look at how this is going to help us solve some equations. So let's take a look at an example. Let's say we have um, x squared plus 6x minus uh, 10 is equal to, oh, I don't know, to 5. Now, right now, this is not a perfect square trinomial, so there's no way to factor this as a perfect square like we did before. 
So what I want to do is make a space. Just like we saw up here, when there was a blank space here, we could make this a perfect square trinomial. I want to make a blank space right here. I want that 10 gone. I want to open space there. So x squared plus 6x, and I'm going to leave a blank there, is equal to 15. What I want to do is complete the square. If I'm going to add something to the left side, I'm going to add something also to the right side. So I'm going to put that blank um, over on the right side too. So I'm going to bring this down. I'm going to square it, and, or divide it by 2, get 3, square that, and I'm adding 9 to both sides. Now the left side will factor to x plus 3 squared, and the right side now I have 24. Now that I can solve this using a square root, because now I have just that variable in that square, I'm going to take the square root of both sides, I get x plus 3 is equal to, let's see, plus minus, let's go ahead and round this, so square root of 24 is um, 4.90. Subtract 3 from each side, and x is equal to, uh, let's see, what do we got here? Positive 4.9 minus 3 is positive 1.90, and negative 4.90 minus 3, negative 7.90. And there are our two solutions. Let's go back in and check the original equation. Uh, so I'm going to take 1.90 squared plus 6 times 1.90 minus 10, and we round it so we might not get exactly 5, but it should be very close. 5.01, that's really close. Take negative 7.90 uh, squared plus 6 times negative 7.90 minus 10. I should also get something very close to 5, 5.01. So those are both correct. So we'll take a look at one more example. Uh, let's see, we have 2x squared plus uh, 10x is equal to 20. Alright, so the first thing that we want to do when you're completing the square is that when you do this, bringing it down, dividing by 2, and then squaring it only works when there's nothing in front of x squared. It says 2x squared right now, and I don't want that there. So I'm going to divide both sides by 2. That's going to give me x squared plus 5x is equal to 10. Now, I want to make this a perfect square, so I'm going to go ahead and put in that blank space. So I'm going to add whatever it takes to make it a perfect square. I'm going to put that blank on both sides. So I'm going to bring down 5, divide it by 2, and I get 2.5. When I square that, I get 6.25, and that's what I'm going to add to both sides. Now, the left side is going to factor to x plus 2.5 squared, and the right side now I have 16.25. Uh, now I can undo this square with the square root. On the left side, I have x plus 2.5. On the right side, I undid a square, so I have plus minus. And let's see, the square root of 16.25 is approximately 4.03. I'm going to subtract 2.5 from each side. And so x is equal to, well, when we take 4.03 minus 2.5, we get 1.53. When we take negative 4.03 minus 2.5, we get negative 6.53. So these appear to be my two solutions. Let's go ahead and go in and check those. And in the original equation, 2 times 1.53 squared plus 5, no, that's a 10, 10 times 1.53. And it should give me approximately 20, and it's really close to 20, so that should be good. And let's try the other one. 2 times negative 6.53 squared plus 10 times negative 6.53 should give me about 20. And it does. So that is uh, the process of completing the square to help solve quadratic equations.